All right, folks, and welcome back to English 403503. Uh, and in this lecture, we'll be talking about one of my favorite topics. I, I kind of got my start in the academy, if you will, working on articles about this topic. So it's kind of near and dear to me. It's kind of part of my professional identity, if you will. I've been called the wiki man. <laughs> and uh, computers and writing before. That has happened. Uh, I just, I remember being introduced to wikis in graduate school. I just started there and I was kind of floundering trying to find my place and I wasn't really feeling a lot of the uh, <laughs> subjects of my other courses, but there was a professor by the name of Moxley who uh, turned me on to uh, blogs and wikis. And, you know, he actually knew uh, the one of the founders of Wikipedia, Jimmy Wells, and <laughs> I got to talk to him. <laughs> uh, then, you know, of course, nobody had ever heard of wikis back then. Uh, so it was really fun to kind of be in on something that was that, you know, at the time, cutting edge. Uh, it's been a while since I've really delved into uh, uh, into wikis, but, you know, it's, again, something that I, I know a lot about. I'm, I love talking about. It's just kind of fascinating. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're not going to be talking about necessarily my experiences so much as uh, James P. Purdy, uh, Jim Purdy here, he's got a chapter in this Writing Spaces collection called Wikipedia is Good for You. Let's see, when did this come out? 2010. Uh, so I guess a little bit old. <laughs> it's hard to believe that much time has passed. Uh, but a lot of these uh, same issues, of course, that Purdy talks about in here, uh, you still hear this from time to time. Teachers say, you can't use Wikipedia as a source. Uh, Wikipedia is inaccurate. Wikipedia is wrong. Uh, Wikipedia is of the devil. <laughs> Uh, all that stuff is still out there. Uh, but Purdy's point is, well, first of all, that's not necessarily the truth, that you can't trust Wikipedia. Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, but he's going to be showing you some ways that, if you know more about sort of how Wikipedia works and wikis work, uh, that actually can elucidate some uh, ways, I suppose, that the other types of scholarship or uh, the, the real scholarship gets made. But the, with the peer review process, for example, confuses a lot of students how that works. Uh, the idea of revision, uh, the, uh, uh, the editing process, a lot of it is kind of baked into this Wikipedia model. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is when you're learning about Wikipedia, it's not just a software or, you know, a thing, uh, you know, an online encyclopedia. You actually can get some insights into how the scholarship works in, in general. So it's a pretty good, I like the way that Purdy has set this up. Uh, I assume you know what Wikipedia is, so we can skip over some of that stuff. Uh, that's what he's got here. Wikipedia can help to illustrate recursive revision based on idea development. So uh, revision is something that you don't just do once in one, one fell swoop, uh, but sort of an ongoing process where you're constantly going back in there and tweaking things, and other people are tweaking things, re rewriting things, redoing things. Uh, again, that's that's a lot more like how scholarship really works. Uh, sometimes you get a false model if you just know about how you write essays in English classes, for example, or other classes where there's research papers. Uh, you tend to uh, just kind of do that all yourself. You know, you, you draft it, you do your own editing, you do your own revising to the extent that you revise it all. <laughs> uh, and then, it, you know, you, the teacher reads it, gives you a grade, and then that's, that's that. You know, you never see that again. Uh, very, that's, that's totally not how journal articles are published. You know, it, that's a completely, uh, you know, it, it's, it's way more involved than that. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm working on some articles right now with this uh, group of uh, scholars here at St. Cloud State, some other professors, and, you know, we... You know, sort of internally, we do a lot of revision, constantly going back, rewriting parts, bringing in new sources, and so on. Uh, but when that goes out to an editor, uh, that editor will make some comments, give us some uh, questions, things to ponder, suggestions. Then we got to take all that and go back in again. <laughs> you know, sometimes that back and forth can happen several times, uh, especially once reviewers are brought in. Uh, and then even beyond that, uh, based on the discussions people have about that article, uh, if there are any, which <laughs> hopefully there will be. You know, at some point you might actually update that article or write a new one or, uh, you know, a second version of it. And so all of that is modeled in this Wikipedia process. Okay, let's see what he's got here. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so here he's talking about why teachers don't want you citing Wikipedia. 
uh, as a source, you know, in your works cited page. And then, you know, some of you might know this already. I don't know where you, you where you are, how experienced you are uh, with writing research papers. But the idea is that you shouldn't cite uh, dictionaries, encyclopedias, anything that's a general sort of reference book. Uh, and the reason there's the reason they say that is because you want to be getting to the primary sources, not just the, uh, you know, if you think about an encyclopedia, uh, they just hire people who aren't necessarily subject matters uh, or subject matter experts. You know, they just get people that can go in and read, you know, what are, uh, I want to write an encyclopedia article about seals or, or uh, whales or something. You know, I'm not a marine biologist, but I'm fa fairly confident I could gather some material uh, to work up that article. Uh, that's a very different sort of thing than you might find if you went to a journal of marine biology and there's an article there about whales. Uh, or it is, uh, <laughs> uh, for one thing, you probably wouldn't be able to follow that article very well uh, unless you had that uh, expertise. And so basically what, the way it's kind of been described to me, or the way it's been described to me is by the time it gets to an encyclopedia or a textbook or some kind of general reference book, uh, it's been sort of, I don't want to say dumbed down, uh, but it's, it's all the sort of specialist knowledge uh, that would be required to understand that original context. It's kind of stripped away, <laughs> kind of simplified. They're trying to put it into quote-unquote plain language uh, so that this just average person can understand it. Uh, but in that process, they remove a lot of the uh, the subtlety and the nuance there. Uh, you know, it's, just the, it's just the nature of the uh, the enterprise. So that's one of the reasons you don't want to quote Wikipedia, because it's not all that different than an encyclopedia in that sense, right? These may, may or may not be uh, professors, scholars, experts writing these articles. And even if it was, you know, even if you went to the whale article on Wikipedia, there's a noted, you know, biologist, zoologist, whatever the <laughs> whale experts are called, <laughs> whaleologist, <laughs> uh, it still wouldn't be very good to cite because, again, that, uh, scientists would be trying to simplify things for that uh, common reader. They're not writing it for other uh, professionals, other experts. So hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, and then there's this part about the NPOV, NPOV, or the non or the neutral point of view. Uh, so the one of the things if you're teaching 191 or if you, you've had those classes, the, the teachers will say, "Look, we don't try to argue both sides." You know. We sort of, we get it. <laughs> every argument, there's multiple sides. Uh, every, you know, every issue, there it wouldn't be an issue if, if there were just one side, right? I mean, for, for to be something worth debating, uh, there's different people that have different opinions about it, and then they, uh, they argue these things. They try to use data and evidence uh, to make a certain point, argue a point, argue a point of view. Uh, and that's what typically you're being taught to do in college, right? They, they say, read this poem, you know, see if you can find some evidence in the poem to support a particular interpretation, let's say. Uh, and then you'll have a uh, your point of view that you're arguing. This is the this is the way that you should interpret this poem. Uh, the Wikipedia, though, or any encyclopedia, they don't they are in that business of trying to summarize. Like, well, here's a you know, there's many interpretations of this poem. You know, here's some of the more common ones. You know, so they don't necessarily take a stance on which one is right or which one is the, the right uh, way to look at this, right? They're just trying to give you a, enough of the context, I suppose, so you can see where the points of contention are. Uh, and again, that's not really something that would be suitable for a, you know, a scholarly work, because that's what, not what you're doing when you're writing a scholarship. You've got some kind of point to make. Yeah, so research-based writing, assignments, and first-year composition commonly ask you to advance and develop your own argument on the topic by drawing on and responding to these relevant <clears throat> outside sources. So a lot of the times, if you get on Wikipedia, and I'll show you some pages here in a minute, but if you've got some kind of point of view, if you're trying to make an argument, you know, maybe you've done some of your own research and you want to, uh, quote unquote, improve or update a Wikipedia page, you say, well, there's been these new findings, uh, and you, you want to go in and, and correct the page, uh, sometimes they will delete those changes because they'll say, look, this is uh, original research. You're not basing this on sort of established, uh, you know, sort of taken for granted stuff in your field. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, 
you know, it's no longer neutral, right? You're trying to argue a particular uh, point of view, uh, and they don't like that. <laughs> so and so we'll get, I'll show you some examples of that here in a sec. Uh, reviewing, conversing, revising, and sharing. Yeah, the teachers don't like it because of the open participation. That's, you know, frequently criticized. And then they'll say, well, look, yeah, Wikipedia has some article, some errors in it, but so does Encyclopedia Britannica. So big whoop. Uh, the second aspect of Wikipedia that many teachers do not like is this changeability. Let's talk about this one. Uh, so one of the problems with citing this, uh, not just Wikipedia really, but any kind of online you know, a source. Sometimes you, you cite it, and we've seen this before, right? You, you come you come back a year or two later, you click on the link, and the, and the thing's not even there anymore. Uh, so that's the problem. Uh, but it could also still be there, but now it's changed. So the authors have gone in and changed things. And of course, with Wikipedia, this is even more evident. So let's uh, take a quick gander here. <laughs> Uh, so I thought it'd be appropriate for this class if we looked at the digital rhetoric, you know, page here on uh, Wikipedia, and you can see the article here and the links to it. Uh, a lot of people just stop there, right? They they might look here at the definition, see what it is, and you know that's enough for them. <laughs> but there's a couple of things here you might not have uh, looked at before. Uh, one of them is the view history. So let's, this is one of the oldest features of wikis. To me, it's not a wiki if it doesn't have this. Uh, so what this means is that if I go in here and start editing things, changing, changing stuff around, adding to it, taking stuff away, whatever the case may be, when I go to save it, it might look like it's recorded over or erased what came before, and it's just gone forever. That's not what happens. Uh, really what happens is it saves that original document and then saves a new one, the one that I worked on, and it just sticks it here on the top of this list. But uh, anybody can come along and look at these earlier versions, and if they think that my corrections or edits were bad, uh, they can just roll back. Uh, you know, you can go to one of these earlier versions here and say, you know, I like this. It looked better. <laughs> couple days ago or a few months ago let's just roll back to that one and you can see here on the sides it's a little bit hard to see like here's somebody called CSB uh, CSB Jork came along on August 13th of August 2021 <laughs> and they said they added new research so you could see let's let's uh, we can do this. We can take a look at that. Yeah, if we can, if we do this, we can see what this research was added. So let's compare the selected versions, and we can see this plus that indicates what was added. Right. Now, so somebody could who's uh, monitoring this page, and basically, if you edit a Wikipedia page. You're typically kind of, uh, it lets you know, you, you can say, I want to know. Uh, whenever anybody changes this digital rhetoric page, I want to be notified. Uh, so you can set that up, and then it would say, hey, look, somebody just changed it. So I say, oh, I really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who is this person? And so I can look here, and look at that. Uh, it's Colin Bjork. So that sounds a little bit to me like the person that was doing that, uh, who made the edit, it sounds like this person took it upon uh, himself to actually add some research that he did. Uh, so he might actually challenge that on the ground of not a original research. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can see what he added there. And if, if you like it, fine. You might just go on about your business. <laughs> if, you, if you got a problem with it, though, uh, you could try to roll it back or you could argue with him or post a little flag. Uh, but anyway, the point is, if I wanted to cite, for whatever reason, this digital rhetoric page, uh, there's two things that are important, and this is built into a proper citation, but it's not, not enough just to have the link or to have some quotes. Uh, what I want to do is say the particular date and even the time, frankly. You know, when was it that I looked at this page uh, so that people could go back to the appropriate version? And you can... Uh, you know, if you have that information, if I, if you know that I accessed this on, say, 
July 31st, uh, then I could look in here and I could see exactly what the version was. You know, go to that one instead of just the, uh, you know, the blank page there. Uh, okay, so that's uh, one of the cool things about Wikipedia you might not have seen before, sort of behind the curtain. Uh, another cool thing, though, is this talk page. And here you can see the digital rhetoric page. There's quite a bit of stuff. You know, they, they sort of want to educate you as to how to be a good encyclopedia author. You know, they're telling you, uh, be polite, <laughs> avoid personal attacks, you know, uh, be welcoming. to A lot of this stuff is like discourse community, uh, bookkeeping or housekeeping type stuff, right? Uh, so they don't want you, they want your first experience editing Wikipedia to be a pleasant one. So hopefully you'll like it enough to come back and stay on as an, as an editor. Um, and it's also kind of the ethics of it and the etiquette i guess like good good etiquette like how do you what's a good way to behave so that the other editors that are working here already uh will welcome you and like your changes so this is the discussion page and you can see what is this 36 something heads on these uh on this page and you can it says untitled but uh let's see what we have here i think this is a Jacob WC, so you can see he came in on 2013 in November and said this. I'm thinking we should take out the state names in the sentence first paragraph. Courses on e-rhetoric are currently being taught at the university level and blah, blah, blah. And just ended after university level. Most major universities now offer some version of e-rhetoric on writing technologies courses. Oh, well, that was a crick ret said that. And then Jacob says, I agree, so I took care of it. Uh, so this is what the this is what Purdy's talking about. Uh, so sometimes, especially if you're new and you haven't edited Wikipedia before, instead of just going to the page and making the edit yourself, uh, you come here to this talk page and you say, look, here's something I've noticed. Maybe this should be looked at or maybe I should change this. And, you know, if anybody, if you got any objections, speak up now. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to come back in a couple days and I'll just go ahead and make the change. So you're giving the community or these editors here a chance to weigh in and say, oh, don't do that, or that's a terrible idea, or, or go ahead, or in this case, um, Crickret, Cricket, Crickret, <laughs> is that, or, uh, oh, Jacob, so I just went ahead and did it. That was a good idea, I just went ahead and did that. Uh, we can see article names, discussion, people requesting moves, and a lot of different points of contention. So what Purdy's, one of the points that Purdy makes in this article is that if you if you take some time to read these discussions, and sometimes these get kind of nasty. It can almost be like reality shows. <laughs> sometimes there's a level of drama uh, behind the uh, the scenes here. Uh, maybe they should do a reality show like Wikipedia editors uh, gone gone crazy. Uh, but uh, Purdy's point, I think it's true, is that this kind of gives you again some insight into the way scholarship really works. I mean, a lot of times you just read a journal article and you have no sense of all the sort of discussion, debate, uh, disagreements, and back and forth that kind of went on behind the scenes. Uh, you just see the finished journal article or the book. Uh, they sort of hide. All this stuff is hidden, but you, you never see this. You never see those emails between the editor and the author, between, uh, you know, the peer reviewers. All that stuff is cloaked. Uh, whereas on Wikipedia, it's completely open. You know, we've, we've got all this. We, we can read it. We can see exactly who said what, when they changed it, what they changed, and, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's a really good model uh, of how that process works. And matter of fact, if we click on, let's look at a Jacob WC here. Uh, so not a lot on his page. It says, I'm a PhD student in rhetoric and composition. Let's see about Crickrit. Not a lot here, too. And I'm a doctoral student in rhetoric and composition, assistant professor. I'm trying to find one that has more. Now, here's one that's got a little bit better developed page. And so you can see this is a user page. It's kind of like their profile page. David A. Sonnenfield, professor of sociology, environmental policy, blah, blah, blah. A <laughs> photo. Okay, it's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, then they got all these different sort of badges and group pages 
you know you can see what groups are members of yeah here's this these badges and I always say this is kind of like your if you remember the if you've been in the scouts <laughs> you have those sort of merit badges you know uh, I, I see this as kind of constructing an ethos credibility you know you say look I'm not just some random person you know look I'm a I'm a master editor too <laughs> platinum editor <laughs> you know, woohoo uh, so that really gives somebody some some clout you know I guess so maybe the when they see that oh look it's who is this you know person that made these changes oh look they're you know they got these badges they, they seem to know what they're doing and that gives you a little bit of a ethos some, some credibility and again same thing with uh, scholarship you know that's why uh, you know we talk about citing a source and one of the criteria for like should I cite that source or not is well is it a credible source you know is this somebody who's known in the field, who has a good reputation, is it a good journal, etc. You know, sometimes it even comes down to the publisher. <laughs> uh, and that carries some weight, right? If it's just some random website, you don't even know who wrote the thing, it's just kind of there, <laughs> just a random tweet, you know, uh, that doesn't carry much, uh, nearly as the same amount of uh, uh, weight behind it. Okay, let's see what else he's got in here. Yeah, you can use Wikipedia rather than a source to cite. It can be a source of ideas, links to other texts, search terms. Yes, this is a very good point as well. If we go back to our digital rhetoric page, let's look at the article here. You know, we can just even looking at the the way these contents are broken down. Like you can see that this people who look who care about the forms and objects of study. Social media is one of the topics. Online communities are one of the topics. Video games, education. And it just goes on and on. There's something called techno-feminism, digital cultural rhetoric. Keep going. We get into concepts. We see controversies. So this is, you know, it's giving you a pretty good idea of this, the scope of this field. Again, the community of people interested in digital rhetoric. What do they care about? And you can learn a lot by what's on this list but also what's not on the list, right? Just so happens video games is one of the items here. Uh, what if it wasn't on here? You know, what if this page said nothing about video games? Well, that might be a clue that this is not a topic uh, that they're interested in. This, this might not be a fruitful area <laughs> of uh, research um, for this community. Uh, maybe you could make an argument as to why it should be, um, but what this would tell you is currently it's really not. Uh, so that would be one place to look at it. Again, just imagining somebody, I don't, you know, I want to write something about digital rhetoric, but I'm not sure what, you know, what's a good place to start. Uh, when you get into research papers, theses, or even before that, the, a lot of times the teachers will tell you to try to find a gap in the research. You know, find something that hasn't been talked about. Try to find a hot topic, a hot question, or, you know, a good angle unexplored underexplored area uh, so again looking at the talk pages here seeing what people are asking about uh, looking at the article itself the way this is broken down you know there's controversies here I uh, see so this would be really good right you can actually see like what are, what are some things that people are actively arguing about within this discourse community and then you could pick a you know pick an angle or point of view and then that could be your topic for your research paper. So I think, you know, Purdy is exactly right here. You can use Wikipedia as a gateway to other texts. Very true, and I can show you this. So within these, let's just say you want to, like, uh, wanted to write about, uh, let's do copyright. <laughs> I see, let's do cyberbullying. Okay, so say you want to write something about cyberbullying. You didn't have a real good place to start. So you're, you're on the digital rhetoric page. You're reading what they say about it. You're seeing what the controversies are. But if you look at these numbers, these are these will take you to these uh, other references, or the, the information they're citing to kind of make their argument. So here's one. Uh, so let's see, where does this start? The trend of people posting about the characters. Oh, you can't see what I'm looking at. Let me uh, exit out. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, one sec.
All right, so if I click on this number here, it will take me to the spot in their, I think they called it, references or citations. <laughs> it's a bunch. <laughs> uh, but I can see the name of this article is The Rhetoric of the Real, Stereotypes of Rural Youth in American Reality Television and Stock Photography. And I can see the name of the journal. Uh, so you might say, that sounds really relevant to my, whatever it is I'm arguing, so you could go find this in the library or using the uh, library website. Verifiability policy requires that posted material posted to articles be verifiable, that is, be cited. And then that looks like the further reading sections. I use these all the time. Because uh, basically what happens, if you just make a claim on this Wikipedia entry about digital rhetoric, somebody might come along and say, what's your evidence for that? Or, you know, says you. <laughs> Where's your proof, buddy? Uh, so then I would need to find uh, maybe a journal article or a you know, policy statement, you know, just something I can link to. Uh, so they can go and take a look at that and verify, does that in fact exist? And does it say what he's saying it says? Uh, if so, good. Uh, if not, we're just going to take it off. So there's this kind of constant peer review process going on. He says, yeah, don't use it instead of the library's online database. You know, you always, <laughs> it's a good place to start, uh, get some ideas, but, you know, frankly, they're not, you know, again, it's just kind of this general overview of a topic here. Uh, they're not going to do deep dives on every one of those uh, controversies we were looking at. Uh, they just kind of get you started, and then you have to see what the uh, what those articles are referencing, and maybe there's some newer stuff that hasn't appeared yet. Uh, again, the Wikipedia, they're not going to be publishing cutting-edge, controversial uh, research. Right? They're just interested in like what's generally accepted <laughs> uh, by these communities, by these groups of scholars and professors, not the you know stuff that's still kind of being debated. Uh, looking at Wikipedia can help to demystify these practices. Yes, it can. Article, discussion, edit this page, and history. We have looked at those. And we've talked about how they can be, yep, how you can, uh, can't just post anything. <laughs> Remember when uh, Colbert was doing, he had something, I think it was Colbert. Uh, either him or Jimmy, uh, who was that? But anyway, I think I'm pretty sure it was called Bear. He had some little skit one time where he's like, go change the, everybody that watches this, go change the elephants page on Wikipedia. You know, we, we can change reality. I don't know what his, what his angle was on that. Uh, but, you know, that was quickly, it didn't last, and almost instantly somebody went and changed it back. It probably aggravated them. Like all these random people were just coming to this, Elephants page. Let's see if they mention that anywhere. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like, it was elephants, right? And, uh, I wonder if they mentioned that anywhere on this page. <laughs> let's see. Colbert. No, let's look at the talk page. I'll bet you it's there. Cold. No? Maybe it was a... Anyway, I'm, I know I'm not making this up. Uh, somebody had... Matter of fact, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so here it is. Yeah, this is back in 2006. Uh, so he did a skit about... Uh, what is this? His definition of wikiality. I thought it had something to do with elephants. Yeah, here we go. Colbert urged viewers to find Wikipedia's entry on elephants and edited edit it to state that the elephant population has tripled over the last six months. Uh, I, again, can't see this. Let me... Uh, yeah. <laughs> As you might imagine, Colbert fans leapt, leaped to the task by adding news of the amazing pachyderm expansion to Wikipedia's articles on elephants. Uh, the editor, talker, Wikipedia Guardian was not amused. He slapped a lock on the article. And for good measure, block Mr. Colbert from editing in any Wikipedia entries. He blocked the defender of the truth. So, uh, again, when people tell you that, you know, Wikipedia is completely unreliable, that, you know, they anything goes, it's kind of this anarchy, 
uh, really that's not the case. You know, that Colbert, no telling how many people tried to edit that page, but they, they were on it just like that, and they kept that uh, misinformation for getting uh, spread. Not to say there's not other misinformation on Wikipedia. <laughs> it's probably full of it. Uh, you know, all kinds of people with access to grind will be on there trying to, you know, get whatever their, uh, you know, issues are uh, passed off as common knowledge or, or fact. Uh, when it, but you know, that's the reason why they want people to uh, like you uh, to get involved. And if you see errors and things, and if you see sort of shenanigans, <laughs> uh, instead of just complaining about it. Uh, you know, the thing to do is get on the talk page at least and say, hey, look, I think there's a little something fishy going on here. That doesn't look right. Uh, or just make the change yourself. Yes, conversing, talking about the articles. Yeah, one of the things I've... I probably spent more of my time doing than anything else as a professor. Just students come to me and they say, look, I, I just don't know what to write about. I'm having a real hard time to find a way into this topic into this conversation you know i want to i know i want to write something about digital rhetoric <laughs> but you know help me out i'm just really floundering here uh, so i always uh you know point at things like this well go look at the wikipedia page you know look at what the people the editors there are discussing uh see what's new uh see what's been recently added see what might have been taken away you know see that might be a way in uh, you might be able to find something interesting that way that, that's relevant uh, that people are interested in talking about rather than just trying to come up with you know everybody always wants to be original like i've got this brand new question that nobody's ever asked before you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm coming out completely out of left field with this <laughs> you know but chances are when you do that uh, people don't think it's brilliant they just think wow this per this is strange or this doesn't really belong you know maybe there's a reason why bigfoot <laughs> or UFOs or whatever <laughs> is not on that digital rhetoric page and maybe they don't they're not interested in talking about uh, so that can be a, a corrective too that's the effect of Wikipedia contributors revise articles for, yeah that they do I don't know if he gets into this but sometimes it's not people it's bots you know, so there are algorithms basically that go in there looking for stuff making little corrections could be a little stylistic issues uh, sometimes it flags things, you know, says this might be original research here, or this person's not famous enough to have his, his or her own Wikipedia page. Uh, that's happened to somebody you may know before, very embarrassing. But see, rarely do people record perfectly what they think the first time they write. Oh, yes. And yeah, then he talks about sharing. Yeah, that's the thing. It's one thing to have this quote-unquote brilliant essay uh, that you write and you never show it to anybody. Well, who's to say it's brilliant or not? <laughs> you know, if you if you don't put it out there uh, for other people to read it and debate it and argue about it, you know, it's not really going to make any kind of impact. And, and really, you don't really uh, know for sure, right? I mean, it's the whole point of scholarship, and this, I talk about it as being the... Uh, the fire of academic discourse. You know, you, you don't know if it, maybe this is true, maybe this is not true. So you, you write it down, <laughs> you put it out there, you see people debate it. Uh, and if it comes out on top, you feel like, well, that was probably relatively true. Uh, if it quickly gets dismissed or proven wrong, well, there you go. Uh, and then he says, you could take it to the writing center. Oh, this is just kind of general feedback. So you might not be posting an essay on Wikipedia. You probably shouldn't do that, again, because it's not a neutral point of view. Uh, but you can think about how these Wikipedia editors discuss things and how you might go to the writing center and sit down with a, a writing coach and talk about, you know, what uh, your essay, talk about these different uh, aspects of it. Uh, the point is you're getting some revision, you're, get, or you're getting some feedback that you can use to go back in and, and revise it. Uh, based on what they tell you. Doing research-based writing can also be less daunting and more fulfilling and fun when you understand the practices involved and realize that these activities are an important part of knowledge creation. The process doesn't stop when the writing is made public. That's just the beginning. All right, so just to quickly wrap up, I thought I would come back here to this 
talk a little bit about this uh, page I did in this, this course a few, <laughs> a few years ago, <laughs> uh, this rhetoric and composition. And so one of the fun things about this project was, uh, you know, the I kind of want to just kind of throw the students into this and say, you all figure it out. You know, figure out how you want to organize yourselves, you know, into sections and things. And what they, you know, what we found was that there were certain people in the class that kind of really got into this. And they, they were basically looking at every page and making edits, just thousands. I mean, they're sort of like super wiki uh, editors. Uh, whereas other people might come in and make a small edition somewhere, you know, and then, and then never look at it again. They felt very uncomfortable uh, changing anything on other people's, you know, pages. So like the, if they didn't work on this researching page, they'd be really nervous about coming in here and... Uh, making changes uh, whereas other people were perfectly okay with that <laughs> and so I remember the the thing that really stands out to me was uh, somebody had done a you see this picture over here with this fountain pen <laughs> uh, so somebody had another one this was this is not it it was like a piece of paper I don't know what happened to it but anyway somebody put a lot of work into a graphic uh, like a title page and they came back uh, the next day, and somebody had removed it. Matter of fact, can we still see that image? <laughs> Let's see if it's yeah. Front page. Look, it's still here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's still here. Cool. Uh, so they had this this image here they wanted, and then you know, let's see, Luke. No complaints as of yet. Oh, so this is what he added. The light one, I propose a different image. Uh, let's see, I have to maybe find, look around a little bit on here. Yeah, we can actually view the history of this, of this page. But anyway, uh, what happened was somebody from, it wasn't in the class, you know, just an outsider, just somebody was on this, looking at the book, uh, said this, this image has taken too long to load. <laughs> it's unnecessary. Uh, so they took it down. You know, and then this student came in the next day. He was really upset. Like, where's my image? You know, like, oh, my God, they deleted it. it really hurt his feelings. And so then he kind of got in here and was having a discussion with them. And I think they might have, uh, I forget how this image came about. Uh, but anyway, he was able to, oh, look, yeah, here it is. I personally, despite liking the wiki book, thought the cover was cheesy. For a better cover, perhaps you could scan a sheet of paper, switch to courier news. So this Cyberman, <laughs> uh, that comment, it wasn't just, you know, the artist, the artist was upset, but, you know, the, the class kind of rallied around him. Like, that, that wasn't right. You know, this, who's this person just to come in and change our, our uh, image? So they kind of had a little back and forth and they came up with a compromise. Everything worked out in the end, but it just always kind of stuck, stuck in my mind as, you know, an example, and I kept, I kept having to say, look, this is a, you know, this isn't like a standard essay assignment where you can just do what you want, and, uh, you know, that's fine. You actually have to negotiate and collaborate with people that aren't even in the class, right? Just people that just want to use this book or reading it, you know, you might be having to justify things to them, uh, and that was something new, you know, for these students. They, they weren't used to having that, thinking about their writing in that way is something that could kind of perpetually being revised and argued and updated and debated. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop here because I could talk about this topic for hours. <laughs> uh, but I am curious if you, uh, you know, have questions or comments or experiences working with uh, Wikipedia or wikis you'd like to share. I'd love to hear those, but I'll stop it here and see you next time.